I just don't think it's gonna get any better than this. So, you gonna help me cook, mister? This is my interpretation of a paella that is easy and approachable. We are beginning the preparation for our paella and we need red bell peppers and onion to saute in the beginning. I usually buy the little tiny party peppers, but this day, these were the better bargain in my store. So that's what we got. One color, not a party. But isn't paella a party on its own anyway? Paella ends up being a lot like risotto and a lot like jambalaya. It's as if it were the love child of the two of them. So we're going to start with sauteing our vegetables. Then we are going to add our meat and get everything cooking. And then we'll add the rice and all will be well in the world. We've got a beautiful pot of stock simmering on the stove. I made that this morning. Uh, I had some leftover shells of crab and lobster in the freezer and I've been keeping those to make stock with and today is the day. So that also has some fresh thyme and saffron in the stock. So that is where we get the lovely yellow color in the paella. And we're gonna need just as much onion. These are Walla Walla. That's my local sweet onion. They're in season right now. Straight and steady. I need my fingers for my day job, so I have to be very careful in the kitchen. You'll notice I am not using a traditional paella pan. Why? Because I don't have one, and chances are you don't have one either, but you probably have a cast iron skillet. Now this is a 15 inch, uh, that's my, my favorite for this type of dish because I want it to spread out and have as much room as possible because I don't want it to be tall, I want it to be wide. Butter, olive oil, pan, We'll put our aromatics in there, get them softened up. Mmm, my stock smells delicious. It won't be long before these smell delicious, but they will take a little bit of time. So let's make sure we have everything else that we need. I've got frozen shrimp, uh, frozen peas and carrots. I've got arborio rice. I've got some chicken thighs that I have cut into pieces and seasoned with smoked paprika and garlic. I've got some fresh ground chorizo from my local butcher shop. And the pièce de résistance, fresh clams dug from our beach place, still fresh, still cooking, all ready to go. The problem with the big pan and the regular traditional burner that you probably have on your stove is the outside edges are not going to be as hot as the middle. So you'll want to go ahead and stir things around a little bit. We're going to actually finish this in the oven because we are working with a bigger pan. So let's go ahead and get that turned on. Let's go ahead and add our chorizo. Raw pork, we want to make sure we give that plenty of time to cook. Now chorizo is just a Spanish pork sausage. Uh, it's got the same type of seasonings as I've got on the uh, chicken there. We've got smoked paprika and garlic and some hotter peppers as well. If you'll notice, the chorizo is giving off a little bit of color and making our onions a little bit orange, which is great because along with the saffron that's in the stock, that's going to help make that white rice more yellow. You know what we're missing? Wine. Let's see what I can do about that. So in a perfectly scandalous mood, I'm having French wine while making a Spanish dish. I love Spanish wine, I just didn't have any today. This is what was there, so vive la France. All right, back to Spain. I think we're far enough along, we can go ahead and add raw chicken. So these are just a little bit larger than bite size, or depending on how you eat. They might be bite-sized for you. Well, this smells unbelievably delicious. I, I can't even describe for you. 
Saffron has a very distinctive aroma. It's herbaceous and floral at the same time. And because I've got it in the uh, lobster crab stock, which sounds so indulgent I can hardly even stand saying it, um, it's really intensely aromatic. Plus the garlic and the smoked paprika that we've got going on in the pan here. Let's toast some rice, shall we? And this is our Boreo rice, just like you would use for risotto. So now, all of the lovely bits of flavor that came off of the meat are going to get soaked into the rice. And don't forget we've still got this to add. Now I'm making this with two cups of rice and four cups of stock. That's about the right amount for the meat that I have. I don't want it to be all meat and no rice. We need to have things coming in together. Here's what we're looking for on the rice. See how some are still white and opaque and others are translucent. We are looking for a more translucent rice, but we are very, very close. And you can see we're losing a lot of the moisture that we had. All of that is being sucked into the rice as well. So the olive oil, the butter, the chorizo, the seasoning on the chicken, the juices from the chicken, all of that is going into the rice. And let's pour in this quart of stock. And it is warmed. Uh, I took it off the, the stove, it was simmering. And did you notice how yellow that was? So now you can see the rivers of orange running through. We'll just give that a good stir. Obviously, we're not gonna have a lid big enough to put on this pan, a paella pan is done on a grill surface or on a burner completely, but again, we're adapting. So we're gonna go ahead and put this in the oven, which I have preheated to 350. Into the oven we go. And we'll check on that in about 10, 15 minutes and see how it's doing. Okay, so this has been in the oven for a while. We're going to go ahead and pull it out and add our seafood. So you can artfully arrange these or not. The, uh, the question is going to be always, of course, did you plan the exact number of shrimp? And we still have clams. Let us not forget the lowly mollusks. And now, what we've all been waiting for. These clams have been soaking in salt water, so they have completely cleaned themselves. Back in the oven. All right, now, all we need is the clams to open and the rice to absorb the rest of the liquid. And in theory, that'll all happen at the same time. And we'll throw on our peas and carrots right at the end and we'll be good to go. See you in a minute. So, we should be getting close, but not quite done. So the last thing that needs to go in are the peas and carrots. Well, I've just about run out of room in my pan, haven't I? Clams are starting to open. The shrimp are starting to turn pink. All right. Well, the rice looks like it's sucked up things well. But oh my heavens to Betsy, you don't even know how good this smells. Okay. Just really a couple of minutes. The rice has absorbed most of the liquid. Now in a traditional paella preparation, if we'd have done this all on the stove top in that thin metal skillet, you'd actually have kind of a crispy layer of uh, almost burned rice on the bottom. And there are people that that is their favorite part of the entire paella dish. All right, here we go. Dinner is ready. We've got just a few little garnish toppings here. Rough chopped parsley. And some lemon wedges. 
I really love the aroma of lemons and parsley together. It's one of my favorites. Let's dish this up. I've got to, uh, my guests are so hungry, I really thought they were about to leave. Lemon wedge. All right. Paella. Enjoy. Make sure everybody gets shrimp and clams. A little chicken. 